Good evening, my name is Garrett and welcome to The Last Call. Tonight's final drink is from Krogman's. This is a magic cow. Coming in at a 53.5% ABV, three year age stated Irish whiskey that has been finished in Imperial Milk Stout casks. So Krogman's is actually from Bloomington, Indiana. They do a lot of sourcing from MGP and do some fun um, movie actor style bottles with them. And do, I, it's cool, it's cool things. And you usually keep them very reasonably priced. Uh, but I more recently did the Mellow Piper and I fell in love with it actually. And this one was on the shelf next to it and I go, okay, I'm curious. So we don't know where they, dis where they source this from. They sourced it from Ireland. And it is a mash bill of 30% malt, 70% grain. We know it's three years old. And then they sourced Imperial Milk Stout casks from somebody. We don't know this time. Um, and, and rested it in there for X amount of time. Probably six months or less, I'm assuming. Plus, on top of it, it's non-chill filtered, cask strength, and single barrel. You're, you're getting all the, the nails in on the head here with everything I'm hearing about this bottle. So, as always, we'll be trying it two different ways. First way, neat, no ice, no water. Second way, well, I'll try a drop of water, see what changes up. I don't think I've had, I, I know I've had red breast cast strength, but I'm trying to think of what other Irish I've had that are cast strength, and I really can't think of anything. Hmm. But I was in my adventures at Big Red Liquor, which is a great shop in um, about middle of Indiana, down south. They have a lot of good pricing for most of their things, but they have a lot of the Krogsman, Krogman's bottles there. And this was a, such a, uh, it was one of those prices that I couldn't pass up. I had to get it. That is pale. That is almost like Ardbag. Uh, Lafroid kind of paleness to it. It's so lightly yellow tinted. Well, let's go for notes. I'm gonna let that open up for a moment. Get some ethanol in the nose, but it's not horrible. A little bit of sweetness in there, like um, like a floral sweetness. And it's going to sound weird, but it's, I can smell the milk stout. It's a little malty, but it's got a creaminess factor to it. Yeah, there's a bit of a creaminess to it. And that ABV is really strong in there. And it's not like it's in like a high ethanol, but it's like, whoa, this is going to knock my socks off kind of ABV. Trying to see if I can pick out anything else. It is very light. A little grassiness to it. A uh, little bit of that, that shortbread quality there. Just a little bit. But it's starting to open up and it's actually getting a little bit of a butteriness to it. Like a buttered shortbread cookie note. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go for taste. That's interesting. Hmm. I don't know if I would have known this is Irish on the first sip. I'm going to take another one here before I start talking because I've got to acclimate to that APV. It's teetering on the taste of young. Like, part of me goes, it tastes a little young, but the other part of me goes, no, I don't think it is. There is a quality to this that I'm trying to put my finger on, and it's going to drive me nuts, because I feel like I'm going to sit here and drink the bottle to try to figure out what I want to talk about. Because there is something there that I, my, keeps fleeting my mind. Um, I would say a little bit of a multi-funk. But then it changes into like a creamy vanilla and a bit of a maltiness from the, that beer cask. But then it changes into almost white chocolate that it's kind of soft 
and sweet, but not overly sweet. But it reminds me of a white chocolate. That is weird. I'm digging that. You do get that, that musty malty funk at the beginning. Kind of similar to either a young Irish or I think the best way to put it, that I would say would be like is like monkey shoulder, kind of that musty funky note that's in there. But it doesn't last long. Goes into a little bit of floral grassy note with a bit of the buttery sweetness and then it shifts with that to the white chocolate note. Okay, then. That is a lot different than I was expecting to taste today. Yeah. I'm digging that. Hmm. Try to see if there's anything else. A little bit of a lemon freshness in there, too. Like a citrus lemon freshness right in the mid-palate. But the finish really surprised me. It's like a a lightly sweetened white chocolate. I like that. That's actually pretty solid. All right. Not super complex. And that's both a good and a bad thing. And I don't mind it because it's staying in, when we get to the pricing section, you'll see why. But for a, essentially, I'm gonna call this, just to give it out there, it's a budget Irish pricing. To be able to be non-chill filtered, single barrel, cask strength, and still bring across some solid flavors that doesn't make me turn up my nose because it's too young, is really surprising me. It's simple, but effective. Super light, gosh, I can't imagine how, I mean, this is so lightly colored. Mm. All right, let's see what a little water does. Let's go for notes. ABV does kick up a little bit on there. Still get that um, bit of grassy sharpness. A little bit of vanilla. I'm getting a little bit of that, not getting quite as much of the butteriness that I was getting prior. It's still there, but not really as strong. Not bad though. Let's go for taste. Taste is very similar. Like almost everything is just dialed back a little bit more. The maltiness is dialed up a little bit more. So that young grain note that we were getting prior is dialed up just a little bit more. The maltiness is dialed up a little bit more, but everything else is there and it's dialed back. So you still get that bit of creamy vanilla going on, that bit of white chocolate. It's got that bit of, uh, there is something else in there and I just can't put my finger on it. A Little bit of floral still. Everything else is dialed back a good amount, but it's still not bad. If you gave me a glass of this, I wouldn't snob my nose at it by all means. The neat version I think is a little bit better, but the water version isn't bad at all. It's a little easier to sip on, but I definitely recommend both ways just to give it a try. All right, let's talk about market price because we all know market price is market price and it's always going to vary. Picked this up from Big Red Liquor. Again, that kind of in middle of Indiana, down south. $14.39 or something like that. Less than $15. Look, I can really criticize a lot of bottles. I have paid different amounts for so many different things in my life. Uh, on their website, they say they rate this between $24 and $30 for MSRP. I don't know if Big Red is planning on trying to sell these out or what. Non-chill filtered, single barrel, cask strength. 
that's been aged in those barrels is doing a lot of great things. I think this is really solid for $15. I can't tell you many bottles out there that I would say is worth $15. And if they are, they're all probably all 40, you know, 40%. I think the only one that I could think of that's in that price range is the Evan Williams bottled and bond. I think you could find that between 11 and $15. But for an Irish cast strength with all those, all the fixings, essentially, this is pretty decent. It's not super complex. And I think that's one thing that it's got good, both good and bad to it. If it was too complex, I think it would get lost along its way and they'd probably actually have to start charging more or it just wouldn't land right. But for $15, honestly, I'd buy this and give it as a gift for so many people. And I will probably buy up a backup bottle because I could see having this just as a fun exploration bottle of seeing what different casks can do because it's, they're doing something good here. I really like this. So yeah, there you have it. Krogman's Magic Cow. If you have any questions about the bottle itself, let me know down in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer it. And if you have any specific spirits I should go looking for, also let me know down below. I love the hunt. I love sharing these perfect times with you at home. And as always, may your last trick of the night be the best one.